Today we're going to go over how to make silver on Black Desert Online with Imperial Fish Delivery. This video will give an overview of Imperial Fish Delivery, how to get started, how to find the correct fish and how to increase your silver output with suggestions for improvements. If you want to navigate to the different sections of the video, I provided a table of contents in the description below. Enjoy! The EU NA patch on Wednesday the 10th of August 2016 added Imperial Fish Delivery, which allows fish as a way to make more silver per fish. All Imperial fish prices are locked in at 250% of their base value, no matter the distance. All you need to do is have the node connected. The Imperial fish delivery NPC on each channel can only accept a certain amount of fish, and it's on a first come, first serve basis. The fish list is randomly refilled every three hours and contains only yellow and blue fish, but not all yellow and blue fish can be traded. For a more detailed overview of Imperial trading and fish delivery, please check out Dolphy.net. I'll put a link in the description of that as well. I want to quickly mention that there are five Imperial Fish Delivery NPCs located in Valia, Etheria, Glish, Splashing Point and Valencia City. We are concerned with making silver so I'll focus on Valia, Etheria and give a brief mention to Glish. Ocean fishing is by far the most effective way to make silver with Imperial Fish Delivery. Valia and Etheria's proximity to the ocean make them good choices and it will come down to personal preference. I suggest that beginner fishers start in Valia. It's close to the starting area for brand new players and also has a special hotspot there that we refer to as the Valia Anomaly. The Valia Anomaly is a fishing spot that has a similar return to ocean fishing, but is located on Valia Shore. I assume this spot was added to give a decent amount of silver to newer players. This spot is highly contested though and it may be difficult to sell your fish at peak hours. Before you start fishing you should pay a visit to Karen on Valia Dock and familiarise yourself with the interface. Also note his likeness to Walder Frey. This interface shows you a list of all the Imperial fish their price and how many are remaining for delivery. You want to check for the following Imperial fish, Moray, Grunt, Sea Eel and Herring. It's very likely that all of these fish will have been delivered, but fortunately you can sell the fish no matter how long they have been in your inventory. If you have the contribution points for it, I suggest connecting to Glish through Heidel and checking the Imperial fish delivery embassy there as well. This spot requires no CP investment and is inside of a safe zone. If you can get up earlier than everyone else, you should AFK there overnight. On the first day of Imperial trading, I was able to test Valia Shore for silver per hour output. I was able to get around 1.2 million per hour. This assumed that the spot was abundant and all the fish can be sold. This does not include the relic shards or the value of the Imperial fishing tokens. I find fishing to be one of the most rewarding life skills. As you learn the ocean and gain knowledge of how to fish, your silver output increases. With that said, it's time for you to start learning the ocean, fish by fish. Get out there on your boat and check every sea region. Nah, I'm just kidding. Here's all the fish per region that you can sell to the Imperial Fish Delivery NPC. The fish data was provided by Moonraker who mapped out the ocean per region. Before you go out in the ocean, you need to understand how ocean nodes work. Each sea region only has one node of origin for the fish. This means only that island needs to be connected, no matter where you are fishing in the region. For example, the Balnus Island region, which is just north of Valia, only requires you to have Luivano Island connected in order to sell. All the origin nodes are listed on the cheat sheet in the description. We want to go visit our friend Karen again and take a look at the fish she wants delivered. Using the region cheat sheet, you can cross-reference fish available with their location. Moray, Grunt, Sea Eel and Herring are fully delivered. This eliminates the following sea regions. Seas of Banto, Seas of Nox, Balanus Island, Sousens Island, Seas of Altanova, Eltro Sea and Orisha Island. This leaves a few viable options. Seas of Peon, Seas of Ahamor, Seas of Olvia and Cron Islands. I live and work out of Valia, so I eliminated all the options near Etheria. This leaves Cron Islands and Seas of Olvia as our two options. Both require a four contribution point investment. Seas of Olvia requires you to connect Olvia Coast, which is actually located inland and close to Valia. I chose to connect Cron Islands, which requires you to connect Barami Island, mainly because I was able to connect Balanos Island and Cron Islands for four contribution points. Fishing by sea region nets around 1.2 million an hour. This is without including seals and ancient relic crystal shards. This is the same rate as our beginner method, but this method has the benefit of being consistent. As you get used to fishing like this, there are more things you can do to increase your silver output. One of my previous videos highlighted all of the features of the recently implemented fishing system. One of the key features of the fishing system is the seagull hotspots. As detailed in the previous video, there are two types of seagull hotspot, regular and coelacanth. A regular seagull hotspot stays for 30 minutes before moving and provides only one type of yellowfish per spot. Seagull hotspots take roughly one minute between cast time and when the fish bites. This makes it quite simple for us to work out the best possible silver outcome. The most expensive fish is tuna at 55,000 silver. 
Over that 30 minutes, it's possible to pull in roughly 1.6 million, assuming you take no time between casts and you manage to find a spot that sticks around for 30 minutes. A coelacanth spot is a one-time spot often found near the shore of port towns and cities. The first person to cast their rod is rewarded with a shiny coelacanth. Please note that coelacanths can't be sold to Imperial Fish Delivery NPCs. Combining hotspot fishing and region-based fishing, I was able to fish up 1.9 million in an hour without counting coelacanths, relic shards or seals. All of this with four contribution point investment. The more you fish, the more you'll understand where hotspots spawn and you can start making this much more consistent. There are experimental hotspot routes that could generate anywhere between 2 and 4 million silver an hour, but Imperial Fishing is too new so I'm not confident in any specific routes yet, otherwise I would have shared them. I wanted to mention it because if anyone is interested in taking the fishing further, there's some room for improvement. As a starting point, I've had good luck with seagull spots around the top of Ilya, near Olvia and inferior seas. No fishing guide would be complete without giving a mention to the Triple Float Fishing Rod. The Triple Float Fishing Rod allows you to catch up to 4 fish per cast. It roughly worked out to be around 1.7 times better than a regular fishing rod. The Triple Float Fishing Rod is where the real money starts to be made. Though you should be careful, triple float fishing rods only have 30 durability each and can be only required by doing requests. They also can't be repaired. I will do an updated guide in the future to show a route to get the triple float fishing rod. As I uploaded in this video, we've only had one week of imperial fishing, so it's likely we'll improve on these methods as we go along. If you are interested in helping, you can feel free to check out my Twitch or my Discord channel, where we discuss fishing stuff and the occasional real conversation too. I'm very impressed with the Imperial Fish delivery and I hope they expand on it further when the new ocean content comes out. Thanks for watching and happy fishing.